Well, I guess a uh, good week of practice. Uh, I think our guys were very spirited this week. We worked on a lot of things that we said we're going to work on. Uh, Saturday night is going to be a chance to prove it against a very good football team in a hostile environment. We're going to get up early tomorrow, uh, meet here, practice here, and travel uh, to Kentucky. Have some great meetings there. Have a great day. We should be rested Saturday night, 730. Any questions? Hey, uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm curious. I know a lot of talk is sitting around the coordinators this week, but I'm just curious. In your experience as a football coach, does it take time for coordinators to kind of click with players? And so when you hired two first-year guys, did you kind of yeah. maybe anticipate some growing pains like maybe that we're seeing yeah. now? You know, I think every situation is different. It's on an individual. You know, obviously we've seen Joe Birdie coming here with lights out. Now he has some good players. And uh, I think that it's taken a while that uh, for us to uh, work out some kinks, to find out our identity and know our personnel, and then, then get in the game type situation and know what we can and what we can't do. Obviously, there's things that we need to coach better. That's my responsibility. And there's things that we need to play better. But, you know, on the coaching part, we got to handle that. We got to get better. Coach, you in New Orleans. I, 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 I hope this isn't a recruiting violation, but <laughs> JT Curtis is going for his 600th win tomorrow yeah. night. Yes. Could you speak about him and, and what he's meant to the high school yeah. game in Louisiana? A tremendous icon. You know, uh, first of all, JT has been a mentor of mine, a friend of mine, a confidant, someone I really, really expect, uh, respect. Uh, we have a couple of his coaches here. We talk about him all the time. He was ahead of his game. He played at Arkansas. I thought about that the other day. You know, JT played nose tackle, man, and no wonder his teams are so tough. Manny Misha and I talked about those four-point stances, and he's not going to change them, and, and he stuck to what he knows. And, but you know what? Besides being a great coach, one of the greatest high school coaches ever, he's even a greater person. Yeah, and it's always fun to go talk to him. It's always fun to have him around here. Uh, he will call me every once in a while and ask me, Maybe about a recruiting rule or something about recruiting. He's always looking to get better. A tremendous man. Hey, Coach, good evening. I got a couple of questions. Both of them are kind of odd in nature. Stingley, uh, the release said that he had a procedure. Did he have a surgery? Or was <laughs> it, I mean, is it, uh, can you elaborate any on that? No, I can't say. That's, you know, you know that was the release. Uh, you know, we talked to him and his father, and that's the release that we came up with. And he did have a procedure, and um, that's all I can say. And that's done to protect his future in the NFL, right? Well, I, I just, you know, I just, I just know that my, usually I don't say anything that my players, how, what got hurt, how they got hurt. Uh, we wanted to go ahead and say there was a procedure. Uh, that was a, like a team thing. We all got together and said that, and uh, th that's all we're going to say. And then I think I know the answer to this one. You're going to say it's above your pay grade. But 2007 was the last time LSU played at Kentucky. Yeah. 14 years. As a coach, yeah. coaches football, um, I know that scheduling is something that they're talking about. But is that too long to face a team on their turf? In the I got to say, that's out of my wheelhouse, man. I'm glad we played them this year. You knew I was going to say that. You know, hey, last time I played there, I think it was 2007. So uh, I was at Ole Miss then. And I'm sure the stadium has changed. Uh, but, you know, I know that uh, it's very loud because of the penalties that Florida has had. Uh, Coach Steve has done a tremendous job with his team. I'm glad we played him. It's going to be a tremendous challenge, but I'm glad we played him. Hey, Coach. Matthew Bruni here from 24-7 Sports. Um, when you look at Kentucky's offense, obviously the run game and um, just how they stay on schedule as an offense, yeah. how important are first downs to what they do as an offense and to not get into those third and long situations? Very critical. I mean, the, they run the ball so well. They're so efficient. And I said this before, to be, be minus nine in the turnover ratio and to be five and oh is kind of unheard of. I don't know last time I played a team that was minus nine. And that's such a good team. They're playing good football. And they're playing good football in almost every down. They're very well coached. They're very well balanced. They have a good scheme. Uh, the quarterback knows where to go to the ball. I think their offensive line is best, one of the best, better zone blocking offensive lines that we've seen. And obviously their back knows how to run the zone play. And obviously the NCAA came out with that rule change yesterday with the uh, scholarship limits and, and the initials and that kind of thing. Just what are your thoughts on how that might be a, a big yeah, yeah. First of all, it's a, it's a big help. You know, um, 
say if you got 25 initial scholarships and you were going to sign five transfers or five graduate transfers or five uh, junior college players, that means you only signed 20 high school players. Or maybe if you don't sign seven, you only signed 18 high school players. Now you can sign your full alignment of high school players, which I think is phenomenal, 25, and get seven transfers. So I think that adds to our roster uh, with the transfer portal. I think it's a start. Uh, well, you know, last year with the COVID renewal uh, saved our roster. Uh, our roster would have been depleted if we, those, those guys wouldn't have came back for another year. So I think it's a very good start. Good evening, coaches. William uh, with Tiger Rag. How you doing? Got uh, two questions for you. I want to ask you, first of all, uh, this week in practice, how much have you been able to, you think, improve the operation from the press box to max? And what, what, what were you able to maybe do in terms of enhance that uh, getting, you know, better? Yeah. Well, I know it was a point of emphasis on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and again, we spent a whole period on today of simplifying stuff, uh, taking the field after kickoff, taking the field after a punt, taking the field after a timeout, uh, working in the red zone, uh, switching our personnel on the goal line, all the things that have somehow given us problems. Uh, which we've been working on, but we focused the whole period today on trying to fix that. I think our guys did a tremendous job. Uh, we simplified things. Uh, they graded 100% in practice. Obviously, you got to go in the game, and, and Jake is in the box, and we got to get it done. And the operation on the sideline has to be exact. But I think getting in, getting the play in early, not changing the play of the line of scrimmage and running is going to help. And secondly, with, with Major Burns being out, does this have a chance to maybe get Sage Ryan some more reps and be, make his debut? Yeah, and listen, he has been practicing outstanding. He's been all over the field. Uh, I do believe he's going to get some reps. Uh, he's ready to play. I don't know if he knows the defense. He's had the play. He knows the defense. He hasn't had the proper reps because he was hurt so long. But I do believe that he's going to get a chance to play, yeah. Ed, last night on your radio show, you talked about the screen game that Kentucky yeah. runs. Um, you feel like because you have an aggressive attacking defense, yeah. that is something they'll try to upset? Yeah, I, they do it so well. I mean, they give the number one the ball. He's so freaking fast, man. And he gets on you quick. You know, we have to retrace. You know, their linemen do a great job of getting down the field. Uh, we're going to have to be able to retrace, especially on the middle screens, what we call a tunnel screen. When they bring the ball back inside, the linemen are going to have to show up. It's going to be a big key in the ball game, especially early, because they made those big plays against Florida. It was a little tight bunch set, and they threw the tunnel screen to number one, and it went to 50, 60 yards. Those, those plays can be game breakers. Ed, how can you get the team to play more physical? As a head coach, what can you do to, yeah. to remedy that issue? Yeah, I do believe a commitment of running the football. Uh, we had some very physical drills again this week, Ed. I, I really showed some stuff that our offensive line I thought was doing very well. Uh, in our team meeting room, I saw, showed some physicality of them knocking people off the ball in practice. Uh, we changed a couple of things on offense, a couple of formations that I think that will help us get more physical. But I think it's also a commitment to running the ball. And, you know, if you can, <laughs> it's first down to 10, you lose two yards. It's second down to 12, you're behind the chains, and you, everybody gets frustrated. But I do believe that's why we started last week of trying to get some first down passes, not all first down passes, but a mixture of first down passes and get second and five and get manageable downs where we can run the football. If we can do that, I think we can stay committed to running the ball. Hey, Coach Matthew Bruner here again. Um, you kind of mentioned Kentucky's offensive line. When you look at how they're able to pull guys and get to the second level and get on linebackers quickly, um, and then just the motion in their offense. How similar are they to UCLA, if at all, yeah. and just in how they run the ball and how they execute? It's very similar. We call that gap schemes, and they're very similar. They do a good job, and uh, they give you several different formations that can get you out the gap and give you de several different for motions, and then they pull the other way. Uh, it's kind of like eye candy. You know, they may fake, fake a tall sweep, fake a tall sweep and run a reverse, then run a re uh, fake a reverse and run a tall sweep, then run a counter and get you guys out of position. So I think it's more or less of being in position, our defensive line getting penetration. Our fits got to be exact. We got to be able to use the right people in our fits. We got to know if we spill them and we squeeze them, and we got to attack those blocks. We can't sit at the line of scrimmage and let them win. 
And obviously left tackle has been such a rotation. How do you think this week uh, Anthony Bradford and Cam Wire have been doing at that spot? You know, I think I – think, <laughs> I will say in the game, but I think left tackle is becoming a strength. I, I think uh, Anthony Bradford's playing well. I, Cam Wire is, is this the first week. I think that he's been in, out of a gold jersey all week. He's had a tremendous practice. So now we got two guys that can play left tackle, which is good. We, you know, we, we didn't know who we had to play at left tackle. And now we got two guys that I believe that can go in the game and do very well. And then just Joseph Evans, what's his status right now? Uh, Joseph will not be available in this game. Thank you, guys. Oh, y'all sure we finish? Go Tigers.